4x4 Garage was a magazine we launched back in 2003. I was the editor and the focus of the magazine was technical, hands-on performance improvements and upgrades, 4x4s of all kinds. Just like the magazine, the focus of this show is gonna be showing you the technical aspects of how to improve your 4x4. We'll show you tips, tricks, best practices, and all the things you need to know to not make a mistake and get it right the first time. 4x4 Garage, brought to you by Realtruck.com. This is the last generation of the full-size boxy Bronco, it ran from 1980 to 1996. What kind of made them special back in the day was independent front suspension. The way they achieved that without completely redoing the frame and everything was they just took a solid front axle and they pivoted it, made for a better ride on road, actually very good off-road performance, and it's a very comfortable, capable, kind of medium, high-speed system and it blended a lot of the cool luxury, off-road capability, on-road comfort and status. So they had a little place in every segment of society from your base model all the way up to what this one is, is the Eddie Bauer with all the bells and whistles and options. This Bronco is very indicative of what you might expect to find in a used vehicle of this age. This one's been given a paint job, looks pretty good from the distance. Uh, the carpet's not too bad, the interior looks pretty clean at first blush, but you go to sit down in the seat and it almost auto reclines and everything's kind of worn and rattly feeling. Not all the gauges work, the transmission feels like it's slipping a little. I hear an exhaust leak, suspension's kind of worn out and needs a redo, so it's a prime candidate for some good upgrades. For this vehicle, we're just gonna go in a very mainstream direction. We're gonna do simple bolt-on stuff that addresses the worn components it's suffering from, makes it better off-road, still capable and comfortable on the street. So the goal for this thing is to bring in our Four Wheelers 2022 Overland Adventure. Once we get all the mechanical stuff sorted, all the upgrades made, it's reliable and functional, then we're gonna drag it through the Overland Garden, put all the cool stuff on it we wanna use off-road and go take it on the event. In this first episode, we're gonna address this truck's biggest shortcomings. We're gonna rip out the suspension, install a super lift suspension, clear room for some bigger Falcon tires, and re-gear the differentials with some better gears that'll support those big tires, and add some Eaton True Track limited slip differentials for great off-road performance and good on-road manners. Let's mic up Cody. Let him get yeah. greasy. All right, let's get grimy. Right now, the way we got it, the only thing holding these two halves of the axle assembly in place are these coils. So if we undo this bolt, the whole thing's gonna fall down. So what we're gonna do is roll this big metal table under here, lower the truck down just above it, and then we can uh, remove the springs. Alrighty, clear. We have to cut these radius arm brackets off the frame. So I'm just gonna unbolt this. I'll get an angle grinder and I'll just chop the heads of these rivets down and then I'll take a punch and hammer to ding them out of there and then I can remove this bracket. It's been a couple days and during that time, the owner of this vehicle came in and started cleaning up the TTB front axle assembly for its re-gear and started replacing some of the worn parts like the pivot bushings, all that sort of thing. We have our super lift, longer radius arm, six inch system here. Includes all the drop brackets for the axle assembly, longer coils, and we've got longer radius arms. And what these do is it actually allows these to operate at a lesser angle than if we had retained the factory short arms. And so these allow proper geometry, a much smoother ride, better operation off-road and on-road. We've already got the factory radius arm brackets cut off. What we need to do now is measure 18 inches back from that mounting location, drill some new holes, and remount these on there. Okay. Here we've got the factory bracket here and the super lift bracket. This is quarter inch welded heavy duty steel. Drops the uh, pivot down. This is basically just stamped sheet metal. 
This needs to be installed straight up and down. And so what we're gonna do is just throw the bolt in here to hold it. Easier said than done. We'll take an angle measurement off the frame rail just in case this truck's not sitting level on the lift, but it seems to be, seems to be right at zero. All right, yeah, that's where it goes. It almost never happens, but all the bolt holes lined up. So that's a nice experience when you don't have to bust out a die grinder to put a bracket on. So thank you, Superlift. There's many ways to do this, but this is the way we're doing it. Uh, just because this still has to get sent out to be re-geared, but we want to get the suspension put together today. We're just going to install the arms on the beams, bolt everything down, make sure we're not cross-threading anything into this upper and lower, and then we'll lift each side up into the vehicle individually. So we get the arms hung. Now we're gonna throw the springs on, get them up into their buckets. So the flat part of the spring right here indexes right into there. So we just kind of want to orient it in a way. Drop all the hardware down, drop it on the floor probably. The thing, Plinko. Oh yeah, I knew that would happen. I don't think it'll come through the coils. Come on. Get up here. <laughs> oh, shucks. There you go. Now we're on the threads. Thanks. Pause for dramatic effect. And there we go. Yeah. We've gotten to the point now where we've gone as far on the front suspension as we can without the center section. So until that's re geared and we're ready to finish assembling the front, we're just gonna keep doing what we can. We've got the steering system, the super lift, super runner, so I can get that in right now. If we were smart, we would have put this bracket on before we put the beam on, but no one ever accused us of being smart. What we want to do now is get this to approximately 25 and 3 quarters. There we go. I always use the torque wrench. See, lefties do everything backwards. So these are the Super Runner heavy duty tie rods and the long one, they're two different lengths. So the long one is for the driver side and the short one is for the passenger side. So we'll get the passenger one installed right now. So obviously we're gonna have to set the toe with the vehicle on the ground, the tires on it. But it's nice you got left and right hands. So setting the toes is easy as spinning this until you get the right length. There's 50 foot pounds on these. This is a great example of why you shouldn't start a project till you have all the parts, because we're still waiting on the diff to show up. Um, but this truck has to get off the lift and out of this facility by the end of the week. So it's gonna mean some backwards movement in the future, but we're gonna just put the brakes on and assemble it in a, as a two-wheel drive truck just so we can get it out of here. We get some Duralast rotors. I mean, there's probably real torque specs to set in bearing preload, but um, generally, when I'm doing an initial set on some wheel bearings, I'll just spin them, take a little tug upper and lower and feel if I feel any resistance or play. You don't want to gun these down so hard because obviously then you're going to burn your bearings up. Should be good. 
I'm just going to snug up the radius arm bolts uh, just, just tight enough. I'm not going to torque them the spec until we have the vehicle weight on the suspension because right now everything's drooped out. And if we tighten everything up now, when it, when it went to ride height, it would be, it combined. So best course of action is to get the vehicle on the ground and then torque everything to spec. So for right now, just, just getting the slack out. Between the additional six inches of lift and the additional wheel travel, if we were to keep the factory brake hoses, they would, they would just snap. I mean, the, they're not long enough. So we had some nice braided steel ones custom made at a local shop down the road. That's just one of the little things you have to think about when altering a vehicle's ride height. Oh, Ford, why can't you use nuts and bolts like normal people? Time to do the rear suspension. So we get the tires off. I'm gonna take off the rear sway bar. Um, basically, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is to use full replacement uh, leafs, which is the preferred method. But um, for the initial go on this vehicle, we're gonna use the lift blocks that came in the kits. They go in between the springs and the axle housing. There's pluses and minuses. Plus is it's very easy to install and it's less expensive. The minuses for hard wheeling, in very large tires, it does impart a little additional leverage, which can exacerbate axle wrap issues. But we're just going to go easy and uh, see how she goes on this first run. At some point in time, someone came in here and put a fairly nice aftermarket exhaust system under here. However, uh, as you can see, the factory brake line now rests comfortably right on there. So if we were to run it like this, that line would melt in short order and you'd lose brakes. After you get your lift installed, give it an eyeball and kind of try to see if there's any potential points of conflict or hazard or death and destruction that awaits. We have a brand new MSD distributor for this thing and a new set of MSD wires. We're gonna lay a straight edge just over from here to here and we'll just make a mark here and probably a mark there just so when we drop the new distributor in, it's easier to line up the rotor. We'll make sure it's in the exact same spot. I'm gonna cheat just to make things quick on myself and label the firing order on here. I'm gonna make sure to generously coat this gear drive. Okay, we're gonna drop this in now, but you, you wanna remember, uh, because this gear is angled, as you drop it in and indexes the cam gear, it's going to move that rotor a little bit. So you want to just kind of fudge your rotor over a little past where you think it wants to be. And then drop her in place. We have a coil back there. Oh, we'll put in the coil. That's nice and rusty like it just came out of a boat. We'll lay that right on the factory bracket. We got some 37 inch Falcon AT 3W tires. They call them an AT, but it's really more of a tweener in between an old school mud terrain and an all terrain. So they're more aggressive than an all terrain. Wheels are Indy Sprints. They're 17 by, what are they, nine? And yeah, 17 by nine. It'd be a shame to put something modern and pointy and, and crazy on this when this just fits the vibe of this vehicle so well. That's pretty much it. We've been borrowing this bay here at SEMA Garage. So it's time to get this thing out of here for a couple weeks because they have some work to do in here. We've got the Superlift six inch suspension all installed. It's sitting on its wheels and tires. We've got the toe pretty much set, got the ignition on it. So next time we'll get in here, re-gear the axles, get everything else finished up under the undercarriage, maybe hang the winch and exhaust if we have time. And then let's see where it goes from there. Tune in next time to find out. Not good. Yeah. Negative.